Well, at first, I, I, before starting this year, I didn't really have any experience with film. Um, so when I kind of got this initial brief, I saw using film as a tool to help me with design. Um, but as I kind of got to know the project a little bit more, I found that you can really use the processes to inform the design and, you know, use some of the techniques. So from the beginning of the project, it was really clear that filmic process was going to be quite critical, both within the actual process and development of the project, but also within the output. What was important, I think, is that we, uh, we didn't just use film to uh, sort of present our project work, but use it as a sort of catalyst to drive the initial designs and go through it. I really wanted to use the zoom technique um, to help inform my design. And I looked into The Powers of Tens by Charles and Ray Eames, which was really interesting in seeing how they zoom from just a normal person right out into space and then right back in. And taking that idea and seeing how I could uh, instill that into my design through architectural features and atmospheres. So my manifesto was uh, to design a building that people go to um, in a dystopian world where reconditioning through film is uh, like a major part of society. So I looked at uh, a number of filmic um, adaptations of novels, dystopian novels, to see how different directors have um, expressed euphoria or um, control or disorientation or things like that through filmic means. For my manifesto, I didn't particularly use a filmic process. It was more of um, going back to kind of a film uh, movement. So I did take this kind of approach with the Dogma 95 film movement, which was a film movement in the 90s. Um, where there was kind of these set of rules or ten rules as to, to kind of produce a film with and those rules were a way of kind of testing um, the directive raw ability of filmmaking without using all the high-tech equipment and without using all the sets and everything. So I thought I could grab this concept of getting ten rules and try to refine them into either opposites or something similar as um, design rules for my building. Well, to start with, our site analysis that I did um, with another member of our unit, Sophie, we got the opportunity to interview lots of the locals and ask some questions about the site and the area, and it really helped us to get to know a feeling around the site. Um, and we also went back and did other videos looking at the canal and the buildings, and it really built up this texture to the site that I've not really experienced before in previous projects. Um, and the filming technique really just really helped me with that. Um, and from that, I, it really informed how I wanted um, the context to be reflected in my design. Initially, by picking the site, um, the site for my project was chosen because it was the intersection between four really key sort of modes of transport around the site. These were sort of the trains, uh, the canal, pedestrians and also the road. So by having these around the site this really allowed four different speeds that could be utilised as views from each side of the building. Um, the filmic process really came into this through actually recording the site analysis. So the site analysis became part of the filmic process through actually taking uh, a film, editing it and then understanding the intangible qualities of the site through this. So I started off looking at the site using Recap, which is a photogrammetry tool, and just trying to see how the uh, program would create a 3D space from just 2D photographs. And it led to using, it, using the same program, Recap, to um, looking at film sequences and how a, a sort of collection of frames would be mapped into creating a 3D space of a certain scene. Site analysis showed that the site was bounded by uh, very hard boundaries and my proposal uh, aims to blur those boundaries with, by using filmic effects of fades and dissolves. The site itself is kind of a former industrial site and one of the first things that I noticed when kind of doing the site exploration was that it is very much alienated from the rest of the city and there is this very clear kind of boundary between the site and the city kind of forming this uh, island, industrial island. Um, so one of my first ideas, or my first approach, was trying to maybe blur the lines in a way 
of how you can, yeah, occupying the border essentially. So the site that I did choose for my building literally occupies the border by um, sitting in the kind of interstitial space between the city and the island. The atmosphere I wanted was one to show dynamic light and to f get that feeling of the context of that industrial, the brick, the steel and elements of the canal. And from that I made this collage showing my design studio and prop workshop space, which I imagined as this big open creative space that brought in all those elements. Developing the collage became a process through several stages. Initially using uh, present images and textures to develop an atmosphere of the space. I also used Matt Hyman's divergent technique to manifest the atmosphere in a different way. This forced me to cut up my collage into a different sort of shapes and different uh, areas. Then by laying them out linearly I was able to construct a linear user journey through the building which I would have not been able to find otherwise through the traditional collage. So there were a number of rooms in my building that were inspired by uh, various dystopian films. So for example I have a THX uh, room similar to the room in THX 1138. Um, I've also included um, uh, inspiration from films like Brazil and the, um, the distortion of size in architecture. The space I chose for, for the atmosphere project was one of the circulation cores. As an architectural element, it acted as a mechanism for a fade and dissolve. This blurred the boundaries between the internal and external. The idea of the atmosphere workshop really was to create this kind of dark space because as I'm inhabiting the space underneath the railway line, I wanted to make sure that I could communicate those qualities of kind of darkness and the ambient light from which projections in the inside of the building or even just the artificial light of the building would emanate outwards. So um, when making the model, I kind of wanted to record it uh, at the same time, similar to Jonas Dahlberg does with his models. And I thought that would be quite a good way to record that atmosphere. So not only did film influence the detail of my project, but it influenced my project at every single level. Uh, for an example, I use Sergi Eisenstein's montage theory to help take my site analysis video, deconstruct it, and then actually work into this using the idea of montage theory to get a abstraction of the site, which then could be reapplied into the design of my facade. One of the things that's quite uh, I found quite common in dystopian films is this sense of foreshadowing. So my site is on an existing gasworks, but it doesn't. The building doesn't follow the uh, f uh, footprint of the gas of the gasometer. So instead, I've added um, a small detail in my uh, concrete floor as a little uh, brass strip that will go across that just acts as a slight foreshadowing of what is beneath, which is the THX room. This relates back to my manifesto where. There was one rule in particular that I really wanted to explore a lot more, which was um, rule number seven, which is uh, temporal and geographical alienation must occur within the building. So using that rule, I think that was quite a strong one to push the detailing of the project by kind of trying to bring in uh, views from the exterior into the building and project from the building outwards into the rest of the city. For me, I found this really helpful in creating a strong thesis idea that carried on throughout my project. Using the zoom technique, I was able to inform lots of my decisions about the design, and I found that really useful to always be able to come back to and create this concept that built a really solid design. So through this project, I've not only started to understand and appreciate filmmaking as an art, but also I've really found it valuable to have it as a tool set to take further in my architectural career. It's really enabled me to understand the intangible elements of a site and help take this forward into my design projects. One of the things I found really useful about um, the film unit is exploring uh, storyboarding as a way of finalising a programme or uh, a journey through a building. What I found interesting was using film to sort of show a model um, at a very personal level rather than sort of seeing the overall model in a photograph or something. I was able to use stop, a stop motion film to sort of take you on a journey through the s space and seeing sort of intricate little details that you would, might not see if you're looking at the overall.